Hi everyone, my name is Kendrick and welcome to Travel and Live Free. In this channel, you're going to learn how to save money on travel as a Canadian. You're also going to learn on how to travel around the world as a Canadian. And you're also going to learn how to get more freedom in your life as a Canadian. Now in this video, we're going to cover the Alaska Airlines mileage program because it's one of the best programs out there that Canadians can use in order to save money on travel. The way I look at it is that the three best frequent flyer program that Canadians can use is Aeroplan, which is part of the Star Alliance, British Airways Avios, which is part of the One World Alliance, and Alaska Airlines, which does not belong in those alliances, but are partners with alliances between Star Alliance, One World, and even airlines outside of those two airline alliances. Now, the single best way to earn miles with Alaska Airlines is to get the MBNA Alaska Airlines MasterCard. Now, there's two versions of the MasterCard, one for individuals that earn $80,000 or more on annual income, and the other one for individuals who make less than $80,000 on annual income. So if you make over $80,000 on annual income, then you're gonna want to get the World Elite Alaska Airlines MasterCard, and on that card, you can earn 30,000 welcome bonus miles after spending $1,000 within the first 90 days. Now, the card does have an annual fee of $99, but if you sign up through Great Canadian Rebates, then you can get $60 back and essentially you're going to take $99 minus $60 and you're going to end up with $39 on the annual fee paid. On the other hand, you can also get the Alaska Airlines Platinum Card and with that card, you can earn 20,000 Alaska Airline miles. It does have an annual fee of $75, but again, if you use the Great Canadian Rebate as your method for applying for the card, then you can get $60 back and essentially the annual fee is just $15. So that's an amazing deal for you to get a lot of points in the Alaska Airlines program. You can also get Alaska Airlines by transferring your Marriott Bonvoy points into Alaska Airlines. However, that's not a very good way for you to use your Bonvoy points. And I'm personally never gonna do that. And if I don't do something, then I won't be recommending it to anyone. Now, when it comes to these credit cards, what a lot of people do is they sign up for these credit card every three to six months. So you can earn anywhere between 40,000 Alaska Airlines miles if you are on the conservative side. And if you're really aggressive, let's say you get the card three times per year, then you can essentially earn up to 90,000 Alaska Airlines miles. Now, before you apply for any credit cards and you cancel them and apply again, do make sure that you are responsible with your credit score. So I do have a video on how your credit score works. So I will leave that in the link below. So you can check that out if you are scared of signing up for many credit cards and then having your credit score negatively affected. Next, we're gonna talk about how to redeem those Alaska Airlines miles once you have them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to my screen and I'll show you some of the best ways for you to redeem those miles as soon as you have miles for a redemption. So let's go there right now. Now before we go to the Alaska Airlines portal, I just want to remind you that for some of Alaska Airlines partners such as Cathay Pacific and LATAM, you cannot book those on the online website. Instead, you need to phone in Alaska Airlines and give them the availability and you have to do the booking over the phone. So for you to find the availability, you can use one of the partners for Cathay Pacific and LATAM and Qantas is one of the most popular one that people use. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a quick demonstration of how you can do that, how you can find availability on Cathay Pacific. So here we are now on the website. We're just gonna click use points one way. Again, this is just a mock search. So obviously do your own research. And after we have all the details at hand, then we simply just um, just check here. So make sure that when you open the date, make sure you click flexible with dates. Um, otherwise, it's, you, you're gonna have to search one at a time and that's quite tedious. So we're gonna hit search flights and it's gonna load and we'll find out what availability there is for the month of March next year. All right, so if you scroll down right here, you'll see all the different availabilities. So let's say you wanna fly on business you want to check this box where it says economy, check this box where it says premium economy, and then hit the go button so that we can filter it further so you can find the availability for the kind of flight that you want. All right, so now it's showing all the days where there is a flight potentially on business class. So we'll just search one of them, hit the continue button. And if we don't find anything, we can always go back and search again. So let's see if we can find anything here. So looks like there's nothing in terms of a direct flight on business class, but there is premium economy. So if you want to do premium economy, you can uh, you can select that. Otherwise, we can always change the search and uh, see if we can find something else. 
So again, we're going to do the exact same search again. Make sure that you have that checked. We're going to do a search one more time. And if you don't find anything, it's just one of those things where you do have to take the time to, uh, to research and find availability. All right, we'll uncheck these two boxes again. Hit the go button again. And then we'll wait a few seconds and see what happens. All right, so we're now taking on this page again. Let's just pick a random date. Let's pick uh, the 12th of March, 2020 and see what that looks like. And still no availability on business. So uh, obviously you just need to take your time to to go search. But, you know, if you want to fly premium economy or economy, it's, uh, it's a simple search. So basically that's how you would do the booking if you're going to book with Cathay Pacific or LATAM, which you cannot book on the online portal. But if it's with a different partner where you can book through the online portal, then you can simply go to your Alaska Airlines account. So we're going to do that right now. So we're now on the Alaska Airlines portal and you can make any booking here and it's pretty straightforward. We, you can select one way if you want to fly a one way flight. You can select a round trip flight if you want to fly a round trip flight. And the biggest thing that people need to keep in mind is that if you use multi city, so you click the box that says multi city, click the box that says use miles. Then what happens next is that the from to two and the from to two. So basically when you book with Alaska Airlines, you are allowed to have one stop over in the middle of a one way flight. The only exception to this rule is that if you're flying on uh, intra Asia flights, then you're not allowed to have any stopovers in between. So I'll just do a quick example here going from Vancouver, going to uh, Japan and having another stopover in, in Japan before we go on to New Delhi. So we're just going to do that right now. Okay, so click here, here, and I'll pick New Delhi for here. So again, this is just a mock search. I'm just kind of show you that even when you use multi-city, you can use multi-city for a one-way flight. You don't have to do a round-trip flight with multi-city. You can simply do a one-way flight, and that's more than enough, and that's okay. All right, so we'll pick a random date uh, just for next year, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. So we'll click the search button and to see what happens next. All right, so if you look at here right now, uh, Japan Airlines does have a flight on business class and one of the rules if you look at on this screen carefully is that Alaska Airlines and Japan Airlines are on connecting flights. Now typically you're not allowed to have two different partners when you book your Alaska Airlines miles. However, you are allowed to have one partner plus Alaska Airlines within your itinerary. So if you need to connect through a city in North America, then you need to connect through Alaska Airlines and then you can continue on with a partner. So as you can see here, you can clearly go from Vancouver to Seattle. From Seattle, you're gonna fly to Japan. Stay in Japan. So if we click the stop here, you can stay in Japan for um, a few days. And then after you spend a few days in Japan, you can move on next to New Delhi. So again, this is one of the best redemption out there. Again, you can fly on business. If you do more search, you can even probably fly on first class. Now, as far as fees goes, there is a service fee for the following. So if you go to the Alaska Airlines website, you'll find that there's a $15 non-refundable call center booking fee for new awards book over the phone. There's also a $25 non-refundable partner award fee that applies to all awards using one of our airline partners. And they also have a $125 change or cancellation fee for any booking made more than 24 hours since you made the booking. Well, I hope that you found this video helpful on the Alaska Airlines mileage program. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and leave your comments below. And don't forget to sign up to the Travel and Live Free newsletter, which you can also sign up in the description below. Until next time, everyone, see you then.